Thank you. Yep, all set. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of November 23rd, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. For rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Roll call. Adams. Amphrey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Brooks Powers. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cornegie. Aki. Dharma Diaz. Ruben Diaz. Presenting. Dinowitz. Drum. Present. Eugene. Felice. Gennaro. Gibson. Jonah. Good afternoon. Present. Present. Thank you. Jonai. Present. 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 Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Kozlowitz. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Menchaca, Miller, Moya, Perkins, Powers, Reynoso, Riley, Present, Rivera, Rodriguez, Rose, Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Traeger. Ulrich. Valone. Here and Madam Majority may, Leader, may I have permission to vote aye on all matters on today's general calendar? I'm sorry, this is roll call, Council. Not okay, at this time. But I'm giving permission. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Maddio. Felice. Present. Cumbo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. Eugene Thank is you. Here. I'm here. Eugene is here. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Ulrich, Ulrich is also here. Thank you. Can you can you acknowledge you get my presence? Yes, we have you, Councilmember Eugene. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. The joys of the hybrid. 
Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Tamar Crystal, Senior Chaplain and Spiritual Leader at the New York Board of Rabbis, located at 65 West 90th Street in Manhattan. Nicole. Mikor HaChayim, God's source of life, may we take this time of thanksgiving to stop and appreciate not only the many blessings we have been given of family, friends, community, and law, but also reconnect to our deep gratitude for the gift of life itself. May we be struck by the wonder of being alive, by the knowledge that we are separate and yet firmly linked by the sense of awe of living in a universe that is greater than ourselves. May we find the world to be sometimes so beautiful that we shall want it to be more so, more often for more people. And may you bless the hands and hearts of those assembled here today and every day to continue to work together with that sense of awe and beauty to create the best possible law for all our constituencies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rabbi Crystal. It's an honor to have you here. And so many of our colleagues are so excited that we've decided to ask our speaker, Corey Johnson, to spread the invocation onto the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to thank, of course, the rabbi for being here today on this holiday week and for that uh, very timely and important uh, invocation for us. So I'm going to make a motion uh, that the invocation be spread in full and upon the record. Thank you so much, Councilmember Johnson. We will now move into the adoption of the minutes. We will have the adoption of minutes by Councilmember Debbie Rose. Madam Majority Leader, I'll make the motion. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated, that the stated meeting of October 21st, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. Sorry, Debbie, I thought you were on delay. I apologize. That's okay, thank you. Yep. We'll now have messages and papers from the mayor. M347, submission of Joseph Dweck for appointment to the Planning Commission. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M348. Coupled on a call-up vote, and I would ask that the clerk take a roll call vote on today's land use call-ups. Again, colleagues, we are just voting on land use call-ups at this time. Adams. Councilmember Adams votes aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. Ayala votes aye. Barron. Councilmember Barron votes aye. Borelli. Borelli votes aye. Brannon. Aye. Brooks Powers. I make a motion for unanimous consent to vote on all land use call ups and all items coupled on the general orders calendar. Any objections? I see no objections. Thank you. you. I vote aye on all land use call ups and all general orders items with the exception of intro 2279A. Thank you. Thank you and wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Councilmember Chin votes aye. Cornegy. I vote aye. Thank you. Dharma Diaz. Councilmember Dharma Diaz votes aye. Councilmember Ruben Diaz. Your vote will see. Thank you, sir. Dinowitz. Thank you, Councilmember Dinowitz votes aye. Drum. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Thank you. Feliz.
Council Member Feliz. Aye or no? Thank you. Gennaro. Council Member Gennaro votes aye. Gibson. But aye. Thank you. Jonai. Aye. Thank you. Grodenchik. Aye. Grodenchik votes aye. Holden. I vote aye. Thank you. Kalos. Aye. Councilmember Kalos votes aye. Ku. Aye. Councilmember Ku votes aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Councilmember Kozlowitz votes aye. Excuse me. Lander. Aye. Councilmember Lander votes aye. Levin. Councilmember Levin votes aye. Levine. Aye. Thank you. Lewis. I vote aye. Thank you. Mizell. Council Member Mizell votes aye. Yes, excuse me. Menchaca. Council Member Menchaca votes aye. Miller. Council Member Miller votes aye. Moya. Council Member Moya votes aye. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Council Member Powers votes aye. Reynoso. Thank you, sir. Council Member Reynoso votes yes. Riley. Aye. Thank you. Rivera. Council Member Rivera votes aye. Rodriguez. Council Member Rodriguez votes aye. Rose. Aye. Thank you. Rosenthal. Vote aye. Thank you. Salamanca. Council Member Amen. Salamanca votes aye. Traeger. Aye. Thank you. Ulrich. Uh, I vote aye. Thank you. Valone. Madam Majority Leader, may I be excused and have permission to vote on all matters on today's land use and general calendar? Are there any objections? I see none. I vote aye on all matters on today's calendar. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving to all. Thank you, you as well. Hey. Thank you. Van Bramer. Aye. Council Member Van Bramer votes aye. Jaeger. Aye. Council Member Jaeger votes aye. Matteo. Cumbo. I vote aye. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Thank you. Today's land use call ups have a vote of 47 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Good afternoon and happy Tuesday. If folks could take their seats, if council members could take their seats, Councilor Miller. Folks could take their seats. Good afternoon, happy Tuesday. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thanks for the folks that are doing this in a hybrid way as well. I wanna thank the staff for making that possible. Today we are voting on 18 bills to help strengthen our city. Some of the bills include the expansion of the rental assistance voucher program to include youth who spent time in runaway and homeless services and in foster care. We're also voting on crucial land use rezonings for the future of our city, including one to develop the New York Blood Center located on the Upper East Side and also the Gowanus rezoning. Uh, as we head into the ho Thanksgiving holiday, I want to wish you all and your family a happy Thanksgiving. I also want to wish a happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate as the Festival of Light starts on the evening of Sunday, November 28th. So happy Hanukkah to all New Yorkers who celebrate. And I wanna ask everyone to of course remain vigilant as we continue to battle COVID-19. The battle against this pandemic is not over yet. It is time to continue to re recommit ourselves to ensuring that we can in fact end this pandemic. As of November 22nd, we have lost 34,747 New Yorkers to COVID. We have lost too many lives to this devastating disease. Please get vaccinated, and if you're eligible, please get your booster shot as well. On Sunday, we received very tragic news coming out of Waukesha, located near Milwaukee in Wisconsin. A driver sped their vehicle through barricades 
and barreled through a crowd of people attending a Christmas parade celebration. Five people were killed and 40 more were injured. I want to send our deepest condolences to the families, friends, and victims of this horrific act. I also would like to take a moment to recognize World AIDS Day, which will be marking on next Wednesday, December 1st. Since the start of the AIDS crisis, approximately 700,000 Americans have died from AIDS. It is a devastating loss. I have lived with HIV since 2004, so 15, uh, more, more than 16 years. I know the fear, the anxiety, and the stress that living with this disease can bring. When I told my family, they told me they loved me, unlike so many others who were cast out because of fear and prejudice. On World AIDS Day, we collectively remember those we lost and mourn for what might have been. We will remember them, and we will remember their struggle. We are sending our condolences to anyone who's lost someone to HIV and AIDS. On Saturday, November 20th, we marked Transgender Day of Remembrance and honored all those that we've lost to hate. 2021 was the deadliest year on record for transgender people. On November 11th, we lost former council member Ed Sadowski. He was a six-term council member who represented areas in Northern Queens, serving from 1961 until 1985. Council member Sadowski was born in Brooklyn and he was dubbed, he dubbed himself an accidental politician. He was the sponsor of critical legislation, creating a commission to oversee the taxi industry, and he was also the force behind establishing the Department of Cultural Affairs. He was 92 years old. As I do at every stated meeting, I want to remember the lives that we've lost uh, to those who were on the job. We mourn the tragic death of David uh, Olima Jr., who fell to his death on November 17th as he was painting the Manhattan Bridge. He was only 37 years old. <clears throat> if we could please stand and pause for a moment of silence for all those New Yorkers who we have lost. Thank you. Now jumping into our docket for the day, the council will vote on the following finance items. The first, a transparency resolution. Second, a pre-considered resolution setting the date and time for a public hearing on the proposed assessment increases for the Lower East Side and Hudson Yards bids. And lastly, two Article 11 property tax exemptions. We have 15 Stratford and Councilmember Matthew Eugene's district, and we also have 1018 East 163rd Street in Councilmember Rafael Salamanca's district. The council will be voting on the following land use items. The Gowanus Neighborhood Plan, as modified, will transform Gowanus into a dynamic, mixed-use, mixed-income neighborhood with approximately 8,495 new housing units, nearly 3,000 of which will be affordable, one and a half acres of new parkland and four acres of new waterfront open space. A comprehensive package of additional capital and policy commitments is included as part of this plan. I really want to congratulate Council Members Brad Lander and Council Member Steve Levin, who have worked on this for years and years and years. Congratulations uh, to both of them for their extraordinary hard work. Yes, give them a round of applause for their extraordinary hard work. We have 1045 Atlantic Avenue rezoning as modified. It will facilitate the development of a new 17-story mixed-use building with approximately 426 dwelling units, 126 of which will be affordable in Councilmember Robert Cornegie's district. Glenmore Manor, as modified, will facilitate an 11-story mixed-use building with 232 units of affordable housing in Councilmember Dharma Diaz's district. Two projects in Councilmember Antonio Reynoso's district 824 Metropolitan Avenue, as modified, will facilitate the development of an eight-story building with 36 dwelling units, 11 of which will be affordable. Cooper Parks Commons, as modified, will facilitate the redevelopment of a four-and-a-half-acre former Greenpoint Hospital campus in East Williamsburg into a two-building mixed-use complex with 553 units of affordable and senior housing. And the New York Blood Center, as modified, will facilitate the creation of a life sciences hub at their existing site in Councilmember Ben Kalos' district, and the rezoning area also covers Councilmember Keith Powers' district. Uh, also in Councilmember Powers' district is 343 Madison Avenue. MTA headquarters, as modified, will facilitate the new, the redevelopment uh, of the site with a 750,000 750, square foot commercial building, including on and off site public realm improvements. 
The city clerk has received multiple protests purporting to be pursuant to Section 200 of the city charter against all the city planning commission resolutions relating to the New York Blood Center. Of those, five did not even arguably fall within the provisions of Charter Section 200 because they were not protests to amendments to the zoning resolution. They have all been posted online with their materials for today's stated meeting. Two of the protests were to the text amendment, City Planning Commission Resolution N210352ZRM, and they were timely filed. However, there is controversy as to how the calculation to determine their sufficiency under Charter Section 200 is to be made. We have been transparent in this and have posted two memos we have received, one containing calculations that would support the protest and one with calculations that would invalidate the protest. If the protest is deemed to be valid, a three-quarters majority vote would be required of the City Council. If the protest is not deemed valid, a simple majority vote would be sufficient. With at least a three-quarters vote, the protest would be moot. I urge my colleagues to support this important and worthy rezoning. The next item is Las Reces. It will facilitate the redevelopment of four buildings and 81 affordable units in Councilmember Bill Perkins and Diana Ayala's district. Also in Councilmember Ayala's district is Wynn Powers, the redevelopment of 346 Powers Avenue with two new buildings with a 221 unit permanent supportive housing facility for families with children and a 95 unit homeless shelter. 185 17 Hillside Avenue rezoning as modified will facilitate the development of a nine story mixed use building with 48 units of housing, 12 affordable in Council Member Jim Gennaro's district. And moving on, the Council will be voting on the following pieces of legislation. Introduction number 1487A, sponsored by Council Member Francisco Moya from the Committee on Land Use, will require the Department of City Planning to conduct a retrospective statistical analysis of all major land use actions approved since 2009 and to report to the mayor and to the council on changes in the population and housing affordability and project areas. These reports will provide the opportunity for oversight and accountability to better inform planning outcomes long into the future. New York City is a constantly changing landscape of new construction and new concepts in urban planning. The history of this change is marked by large land use actions that have implemented well-intentioned land use policies with obvious unintended consequences. From the staff, I want to thank Jeff Campagna and Julie Lubin. Introduction number 1891A, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli from the Committee on Fire and Emergency Management, will permit Zambonis designed for more than one propane canister to operate using two such canisters. Zambonis machines used to resurface ice are regulated by fire code provisions for powered industrial trucks and are currently limited to only one canister during operation, even when such vehicles are built to utilize more. From the staff, I want to thank Joshua Kingsley and Jack Kern. Next up, we have two bills from the Committee on Housing and Buildings. Introduction number 2312A, sponsored by Councilmember Kevin Riley, will limit the fees that a landlord can recover when a tenant vacates a residence before the end of the lease to the fair market cost necessary to prepare the residential dwelling unit for a rental. From the staff, I want to thank Janan Zilka. Introduction number 1635A, sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, will build on the City Canvas pilot program to display artwork on protective structures on construction sites. The bill would expand the breadth of properties that will be eligible to participate, allow for pre-approved artwork property owners can choose from, and make the program permanent. I want to thank Audrey Son. Congratulations, Madam Majority Leader. Moving on, we have two bills from the Committee on Governmental Operations. First, we're voting on introduction number 167B, sponsored by Councilmember Alan Maisel. This bill will require certain agencies to be capable of issuing warnings to fir for first-time violations. This bill would ensure that in cases where administrative code allows for warnings, inspectors are able to use those warnings in the manner provided by law. We are also voting on introduction number 1784A, sponsored by Councilmember Farrell Lewis. This bill would require the mayor to establish a new office for nonprofit organization services. The office would serve as a liaison for nonprofits 
help, to help them navigate city policies, procedures, and regulations, and connecting them with various city resources. It would also advise city agencies on measures to improve their programs and processes to better support the nonprofit sector. Uh, for those two bills, I want to thank C.J. Murray. Moving along from the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, introduction number 2456, which I sponsored, will require that no later than 90 days after the operational commencement date, a covered employer of a retail or food establishment or distribution center located on property within the city that has been improved or developed using city financial assistance shall either submit an attestation that the covered employer has entered or is negotiating into one or more labor peace agreements or submit an attestation to the city or city economic development entity stating that the covered employers, covered employees are not currently represented by a labor organization and no, no labor organization has been sought to represent such covered employees. It's my hope this legislation, what we're voting on today, will help workers and unions uh, in the organizing process while also benefiting employers by ensuring that work will continue regardless of labor negotiations. And I want to thank Lewis Cholden Brown from my staff. Next, we're voting on introduction number 903A, sponsored by Councilmember Adrian Adams, a bill coming out of the Committee on Criminal Justice. This bill requires the Department of Correction to assist people being released in the process of receiving unused commissary funds and ensure that any person with an unused commissary fund is immediately given up to $200 in commissary funds in cash upon request. From the staff, I want to thank Agatha Mavropoulos and Kishorn uh, Denny. Uh, next up, we have a bill that I am co-sponsoring, introduction number 1392A from the Committee on Public Safety. It will require that the city's district attorney's offices report annually on the basic functioning of their offices. These annual reports, which will be posted publicly, will require each office to release various data points related to decision making at various stages of a criminal case, such as data on decisions to prosecute or dismiss a case following arrest, bill recommendations, and average length of a case before a, dip, a disposition. The report also requires the numbers to be disaggregated by offense and by the race, gender, and age of the defendant. Currently, there are no requirements that the city's district attorneys conduct any public reporting on office functions. Although some local district attorneys issue periodic reports, there is no uniformity in such reporting and very little data is publicly released regarding prosecutorial conduct. As a result, there is significant lack of transparency regarding prosecutorial decision making in a manner that limits effective oversight of the district attorneys and hinders public trust in the criminal justice process. From the staff, I want to thank Joshua Kingsley, Matt Thompson, and Jack Story. Moving on, we have four bills from the Committee on Transportation. First up, introduction number 2422A, sponsored by Council Member and Committee Chair Idanis Rodriguez, which will authorize the use of pay by plate parking meters in addition to pay and display parking meters. From the staff, I want to thank Jessica Steinberg Albin and Elliot Lynn. <clears throat> the second bill from the Committee on Transportation, which I sponsored, is introduction number 2253A. The city has experienced an explosion in the number of last mile truck delivery trips as consumers increasingly embrace e commerce, a trend that has been accelerated during the pandemic. Our streets were not designed to accommodate a constant flow of commercial and residential deliveries. This leads to congestion and emissions from double parked or circling trucks and blocked sidewalks and roadways filled with packages as they are staged for delivery. Micro distribution centers address this problem through the creation of dedicated space for delivery companies or small businesses to stage package deliveries, allowing them to offload packages from trucks for transfer for sustainable, to sustainable modes of last mile delivery such as bikes or hand trucks without blocking important sidewalk space or double parking. My bill would require the Department of Transportation to establish a micro distribution center pilot program. Before launching the program, DOT would seek input from entities interested in facilitating, operating, or using micro distribution centers and gather feedback on potential challenges and opportunities. And from the staff, I want to thank Elliot Lynn. The third bill from the Committee on Transportation is introduction number 2277A, sponsored by Council Member Keith Powers. Truck loading zones are an effective solution to problems of double parking and block sidewalks that often occur when trucking companies drop off commercial deliveries, small businesses make service calls, and workers unload tools or materials in heavily utilized public spaces. However, truck loading zones are only usable 
if they are well regulated and not blocked by unauthorized vehicles or construction activity. This bill will reform existing laws governing truck loading zones and codify new curb management practices. Again, I want to thank Elliot Lynn. And the fourth and last bill from the Committee on Transportation is introduction number 2279A, sponsored by Councilmember Antonio Reynoso. While the city uses, while the uses of city streets for transportation, commerce, and recreation have undergone many recent changes, curb space dedicated to the loading and unloading of personal, commercial, and for hire vehicles remains limited. The lack of such space can have significant negative impacts on neighborhoods through the effects of traffic congestion, harmful emissions, and safety hazards. This bill will increase the number of loading zones in neighborhoods citywide. And again, I want to thank Elliot Lynn. Moving on, we're voting on four bills for today's stated meeting that are all sponsored by Council Member uh, Steve Levin. One bill comes from the Committee on Education. The other three from the, come from the Committee on General Welfare, which Council Member Levin chairs. Introduction number 139A will require the Department of Education to disaggregate its annual report on school-based health centers, common student illnesses, and health screenings by student housing status for students in kindergarten through grade eight. The next three bills will come from the Committee on General Welfare. Introduction number 150 will require the creation of a task force regarding the transportation of students in temporary housing. The task force will issue a report assessing barriers to arranging transportation for students in temporary housing and recommendations for addressing barriers. The last two bills for this uh, meeting expand eligibility for rental assistance vouchers program, which is called City FEPS. Introduction number 148A will allow youth who have spent time in foster care to be eligible for City FEPS rental assistance vouchers. Any 90 days of, pre of the previous two years spent in foster care would count as time spent in shelter for purposes of determining eligibility for the vouchers. And lastly, we're voting on introduction number 2405A. This bill will allow youth who have spent time in runaway and homeless youth services funded by the Department of Youth and Community Development to be eligible for City FEPS rental assistance vouchers. Any 90 days of the previous two years spent in these services would count as time spent in the shelter for purposes of determined eligibility for these vouchers. And all three of these really important bills were worked on really hard by Aminta Kilowan. So I want to thank Aminta for her hard work. And finally, lastly, this afternoon we're voting on introduction number 2448A, sponsored by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson and from the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. This bill will amend the city's Earned Safe and Sick Time Act to provide four additional hours of paid leave for parents to get their children vaccinated from COVID-19. And from the staff, I want to thank Stephanie Jones, Leah Skripiak, and Noah Meixler. That is our agenda. It is a long agenda. I want to thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for uh, presiding over today's meeting. And I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you so much for that very robust agenda. We're now going to move into the portion of our program of discussion of general orders. And we are going to begin first with Council Members Salamanca, Kalos, and then Adams. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, um, I rise today to implore my colleagues to vote in favor of the New York Blood Center rezoning. It is no exaggeration when I say the decision we make today has far-ranging impacts on whether we are able to save countless lives from disease and illness that ravage our communities now and in the future. More than any project we have been asked to vote on, the Blood Center rezoning is not just a project that affects New York City. This project affects millions of Americans who will benefit from the medical breakthroughs that will be researched and discovered at this location. From groundbreaking research around HIV, sickle cell, diabetes, autism, and Alzheimer's treatments to store almost 90% of the city's hospital's blood supply. The work that the New York Blood Center undertakes serves every community that calls New York City home. The marginalized communities of the South Bronx that I represent to the affluent communities that make up the Upper East Side. As a former district manager and now chair of the committee on land use, I deeply cherish the voice of the community. However, 
The project we are being asked to vote on today is not a hyper-local housing project that will bring market rate units to a neighborhood or even an over-glorified office tower, as some have called it. This is a project that strikes a balance between the concerns of the surrounding community relating to shadows and building heights, while also having the potential to save the lives of your neighbors, your friends, your family members, and maybe even you one day. This rezoning also provides high quality construction and building service jobs for New Yorkers of all backgrounds. The project you see today is vastly different from, the from when it was first introduced, reducing the building heights by over 100 feet from 334 feet to 233 feet, limiting development to, sci to life science uses and providing over $10 million in funding for the local school and community garden. May I continue, madam? I'm, you I'm have a bit done. more time. Thank you. The last 20 months have shown us how critical it is to prioritize and invest in our medical potential. This rezoning does just that, facilitating the transformation of antiquated research labs into a state-of-the-art beacon for medical innovation. For these reasons, I urge you all to vote in favor of this rezoning. And before I finish, I would like to thank and recognize the tireless efforts of Raju Mann, Julie Lubin, and the entire land use team, Speaker Johnson, Jason Goldman, Councilmember Keith Powers, and Zoning Subcommittee Chair Francisco Moya, and Borough President Gail Brewer, the administration and my colleagues, to reach out to voice their support for getting this project to the, to the pivotal moment. Let's not let shadows overshadow the health of New Yorkers. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Salamanca. We will now hear from Councilmember Ben Kalos. Jason. The fight over the new blood center building was never about blood. It has been about two other issues. How high should the center's four profit partner Longfellow Developments commercial offices tower over a residential neighborhood and member deference? Despite us not having reached a deal I could support, the Land Use Committee voted to approve a modified version of the project, which would be built in the district I represent. To pave the way for this vote, which bucked member deference, much was done to paint me as unreasonable NIMBY and the blood supply as at risk. My community board and I have never opposed a rezoning before. In fact, we voted yes in my backyard to a homeless shelter three blocks from where I live, and multiple rezonings, including a four city block long life sciences campus at Rockefeller University and expanding the hospital for special surgery. We cut the ribbon on the Belfer Research Tower, Romola Sloan Kettering Tower at 74th Street, and acres of space for Cornell Tech. We are building two new towers for the hospital for special surgery on 79th Street and 71st Street over the FDR Drive. I have always been willing to build the blood center, a new building, and our blood supply has never been at risk because they are only permitted by the FDA to test and distribute blood from its complexes on Long Island City, just over a mile away, and on Long Island, not from the Upper East Side. These sites are part of a vast network of buildings that allow the blood center to compete with the Red Cross across 17 states. In fact, the final changes I was asking for on behalf of my constituents, which would have gotten us to a deal, only affected the commercial tower, which takes up two-thirds of the new building. That commercial space is being propped up by 30 feet mechanical floor and ultra-luxury double height ceiling heights. Uh, Majority Leader, if I could have more time, please. You may continue. Yes. Thank you. Perhaps that's because Longfellow's trademark office service, Elevate, boasts of offering tenants curated amenities, from spa treatments and yoga to free-flowing beer and wine, because in Longfellow's words, no one goes to work just to work anymore. The gap we could not cross in our negotiations was how high these money-making spaces would rise, not how many floors or how large the floors would be, all of that would be unchanged. We simply asked Longfellow to move 30 feet of mechanical equipment from the middle of the building to the roof and lower their ceiling heights from 18 feet 
to a more reasonable but still tall 14 feet. In exchange, they would be allowed an additional 50,000 square feet on top of the rezoning we are voting on today. This generous offer was rejected because Longfellow wanted more valuable commercial space and because the mayor and special interests want to prove a point. Local council members don't matter anymore and can no longer represent their communities. I am grateful to the community members and colleagues who stood by me and helped to get the building down from 334 feet to 233 feet, largely by reducing the height of empty spaces in the original 16-story building. Though I remain frustrated by my Though I remain frustrated that my community and I didn't have a seat at the table as Mayor de Blasio himself negotiated the project for developers represented by lobbyist Kramer Levin, who he owes more than a quarter million dollars for keeping him out of jail. The community has demanded investigations. The mayor should have recused himself and still hasn't answered if and when he will ever repay this five-year-old debt. Only after the committee vote, we learned about an enormous bill this project is going to put on taxpayers. In addition to 300,000 square feet of air rights for Longfellow, valued at $300 million, the mayor is giving Longfellow, a Boston-based for-profit developer, $450 million in tax breaks, that's $750 million in total subsidies. We don't ha still don't have a binding community benefits agreement, and the promised restrictive declaration fails to do what the mayor said it would do. The council rejected Amazon over a $3 billion subsidy, and this near billion dollar giveaway to Longfellow for six floors of commercial space should get the same scrutiny. The current project is only 12 stories, but it is 233 feet tall. That's because more than half the building, 118 feet, comes from ceiling heights of 18, 20, and even 30 feet tall. I led the council in capping heights on mechanical floors in residential buildings at 20 feet. I don't see how we can support a building with a 30-foot mechanical floor. Approval from the full council would create a blueprint for deep-pocketed developers to get whatever they want. Don't be fooled into thinking this will work for affordable housing developers, homeless services, faith-based groups, or nonprofit providers. The community filed a protest whose sole purpose is to defeat spot zonings like this one that should force the full city council to achieve a 75% majority of 39 yes votes to pass this rezoning. No matter the outcome, I am committed to working with the Blood Center on a new building. I'm asking you, my colleagues, to honor member deference and oppose the Longfellow Commercial Tower proposal from the Blood Center by voting no on land use items 864, 865, and 866, and accompanying resolutions 1815, 1816, and 1817. Thank you for the additional time. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. We'll now go to Councilmember Adams. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I'd first like to say that I had the honor to serve with the Honorable Ed Sadowski as a member of the Queens Public Library Trustee Board. Ed was a powerhouse to reckon with and to learn from. Among the bills we're voting on today is Introduction 903, my legislation that will require the Department of Correction to return unclaimed commissary funds back into the hands of formerly incarcerated individuals. Over the last several years, DOC has amassed a reported $3.7 million in these unused funds. Although this money belongs to those who have been discharged from the department's custody, far too many people are unaware that they still have money in their commissary accounts. These funds have been sitting there without being properly dispersed to those who may need this money to help get back on their feet. Intro 903A will require the department to assist people being released to navigate the process of retrieving their commissary funds, and any person with unused funds can also request to be given up to $200 in cash. Additionally, this legislation will require DOC to establish a plan to raise awareness about obtaining the funds, make reasonable efforts to return the money, and for the department to report annually on outstanding commissary funds and attempts to return them. Formerly incarcerated individuals face enough challenges upon their release whether it's housing, employment, or lack of opportunities. And I'm confident that this bill will go a long way as they return home. I'd like to thank Ab Ab Agatha Mavropoulos from the Speaker's Office and Ben Feng, my Director of Communications and Legislation, for their hard work on this legislation. And I urge all of my colleagues to vote in favor of Intro 903 today. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. We'll now hear from Councilmember Lander followed finally by Councilmember Riley. Thank you. 
Thanks very much, Madam Majority Leader. The Gowanus neighborhood rezoning shows that it is possible for New Yorkers to plan together for a more inclusive and sustainable future for our city. It shows that many people will accept growth in their neighborhood if they're a real part of the planning process and see it as a way to achieve shared values. This rezoning began nearly a decade ago in grassroots community conversations. It was strengthened through robust participation in literally scores of meetings with over a thousand people sponsored by Community Board 6, which ultimately recommended yes with the modifications we've won on this rezoning. It was strengthened through the advocacy of the remarkable Gowanus Neighborhood Coalition for Justice, a diverse coalition of public housing residents, environmentalists, artists, small businesses, and community leaders. And it featured a partnership approach here at the council. Big, big thank you to Brian Paul and Raju Mann and with City Planning and City Hall. That ensured that the plan to open up Gowanus to housing development that our city urgently needs comes along with the real commitments to genuine affordability, to preserving the mixed use character, the creative character that makes it such a great neighborhood, the renovation of neighborhood public housing, and serious investments in the sewer, transit, parks, and school infrastructure that are needed to sustain growth. The plan we're voting on today is the first mandatory inclusionary housing neighborhood rezoning in a whiter, wealthier neighborhood, the largest rezoning in the de Blasio administration, the first rezoning to undergo a racial impact study that provided extensive evidence that if we want a more integrated and inclusive future, this is the path forward and that the status quo won't get us there. Um, and it includes the strongest affordability and sustainability requirements ever imposed on developers in New York City. A few highlights, and I apologize, Madam Majority Leader, I might go a little over my time. Um, nearly 3,000 units of permanently affordable housing for low-income and working-class families in a neighborhood that is some of the highest rents and home prices in the city, um, and a commitment to 100% affordability on the city-owned public place site, $200 million to ensure that every single one of the 1,662 units in Gowanus Houses and Wyckoff Gardens receives a comprehensive interior modernization, new kitchens, baths, plumbing, electrical, while remaining firmly NYCHA public housing. Innovative approaches to preserve and strengthen the creative mix of uses in Gowanus, including 150 affordable artist studios pursuant to a community benefits agreement between 10 developers and Arts Gowanus, a new zoning district reserved for arts and light manufacturing, preservation of five historic buildings, uh, including the great sub-powerhouse arts uh, nonprofit industrial arts campus, uh, extensive tools for environmental sustainability, including the, supporting the cleanup of the Gowanus Canal, an aggressive new stormwater rule, and a $174 million upgrade to sewer infrastructure to prevent flooding along 4th Avenue. Uh, and thanks to this council, all new development around the canal will, have new, uh, will be required to have rooftop Thank solar, you. wind, or green. Um, I'll just skip all the other great things in the rezoning. I'll point you to the points of agreement. I got to thank a few people, though. Uh, the Gowanus Neighborhood Coalition for Justice, Michelle Della Uza, Fifth Avenue Committee, Andrea Parker at the Gowanus Canal Conservancy, David Kutz and Johnny Thornton at Arts Gowanus, and the Tenant Association leadership at, uh, at Gowanus and Wyckoff. Community Board 6, Mike, Mike Rassiopo and Alex Schierenbeck. Um, uh, Julia Ehrman from my staff, who did just unbelievable work on this, is here, along with Catherine Zanell and Benjamin Solitaire from Steve's office. And last but not least, I have to thank my partner, uh, Steve Levin. It is rare in this council to be able to work so closely with another member on something where you got a lot of knives being thrown at you, a lot of suspicions. Uh, we work together in a way that I think is grounded in your integrity in your partnership and friendship, and I feel proud to have been able to work with you across a lot of years to get this done. I'm really, really grateful for your friendship and your partnership in this work. Uh, this land use stuff is hard. I really think we need some new processes uh, for the future if we're gonna plan for this city, but I think the Gowanus neighborhood rezoning has some of the elements we need to get us there. I hope thank you will. You. Yes, thank you so much, and I apologize, and thank you for the time. Thank you, and congratulations. Uh, Council Member Riley, followed by Council Member Levin, and Council Member Manchaka. If for the remainder of our remarks, if we could stick within the time frame so that we fit within the parameters of the meeting, that would be ideal. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, thank you to my colleagues. This will be my first piece of legislation uh, that I'm bringing to the floor. Um, it has been an honor to be here today as I introduce intro 2312 to call, be called to vote. Uh, many unforeseen circumstances can result in a tenant's need to change 
their housing situation. And with recovery from COVID-19 pandemic still underway, we recognize that many New Yorkers, especially our tenants, are still faced with hardship. Intro 2312 calls to make sure that these New York families are supported and will not be punished or taken advantage of. This bill not only brings us one step closer to the renter's relief, but it also provides assistance to small landlords who help provide housing for New Yorkers, ensuring that they are able to maintain their property reasonably. It is my hope that my colleagues will stand with me on this legislation, which promotes fair rental agreements between tenants and landlords. I thank you to everyone who's there today and happy holidays. Thank you and congratulations, Council Member Riley. Council Member Levin, followed by Council Member Manchaka. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words about the legislation that I'm sponsoring today that uh, we are going to be passing. Uh, intros 139 and 150A um, uh, would be, uh, 150A would establish a task force regarding the transportation of students in temporary housing in New York City. And 139 uh, would require the Department of Education to report on student health services in correlation with student housing, housing status for students in kindergarten through the eighth grade. Um, these two bills um, have been uh, uh, very important for a number of, of years because we know that housing status negatively affects uh, children's health uh, and negatively affects their education. And, but we do not have um, the type of comprehensive data that comes from New York City um, to be able to direct policy. Um, so the establishment of this reporting and uh, this task force um, would, would really um, bring some, a comprehensive approach to uh, the needs of children who, uh, through no fault of their own, find themselves um, in temporary housing, homeless shelters, um, doubled up, and, um, and it's the very least that we could do as a city on behalf of them. And I want to thank, in particular, Randy Levine from Advocates for Children uh, for her amazing work on this legislation for a long period of time. Um, uh, intros um, 2405 and 148. Um, these are two bills that we've worked on for a long time um, to um, uh, make sure that youth that are in foster care and in the DYCD runaway homeless youth system um, don't have to go into shelter in order to qualify for a rental assistance voucher. Don't have to go to an adult shelter when mm -hmm. they age out um, because their time in shelter will count towards um, uh, their, uh, their status as a, um, a being in temporary housing so that they can qualify for, for, um, uh, for that type of voucher. In particular, 2405, I wanted to dedicate to the memory of Lou Fiddler, um, who is, uh, was the, uh, the former chair of the Youth Services Committee. I want to thank our, our current chair, Debbie Rose, uh, for her partnership on this legislation. But in, 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 in Lou's memory, I want to um, uh, dedicate this piece of legislation to him because of his um, unwavering support to the young people in the runaway homeless youth system. Um, uh, so thank you, Debbie. Um, it's great to see you. Uh, there and uh, for your partnership on this and, uh, and, and thank you to Lou who's smiling down from up above. And lastly, I just want to uh, take a moment to, to, to thank our, uh, uh, my, my friend Brad Lander um, on the amazing work uh, in eight years of leadership that he put into making the Gowanus rezoning a reality. Um, his real blood, sweat and tears uh, went into this. And thank you, Speaker, uh, for your support of all these pieces of legislation today. Uh, they would not have passed without, without your support. So thank you very much, Speaker. I told you we'd get it done. Congratulations. And finally, Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. Thank you. Uh, hello, colleagues. I coming up here to vote uh, or to talk about my vote around the blood center, and I know it's been a really uh, difficult conversation, and it's not the first time that we had robust discussions, but I think, I think it's important that Ben has a voice of support because uh, he's not the only one that feels this way. And I know not all of you are up here speaking, but I hope I can speak on your behalf or at least intention around the process that we went through as a council to get here. The local council member is not in support. What does that matter? Well, it's mattered for a long time. And we haven't had a discussion as a body to change that. The game changed at the end on this process, and I think that is of much concern. And I'm thinking about the members of the council who are coming back, and then those who are just elected. 
When I worked with our community around Industry City, we built a very robust set of principles on how something like Industry City that is so important to the neighborhood and the whole city would fall under the thresholds. It didn't meet any of those thresholds and it died. The thresholds that Ben is talking about, I think are reasonable, he is in support, it just didn't get there. That has to mean something. Uh, so I'm gonna be voting against the Blood Center, not because I don't believe in the things that the, thing, that, the, that the Blood Center has put in a letter, not in a legally binding agreement, but in a letter which is an intention uh, that a lot of you are really excited about. Where's the legality around that accountability? When that fails, this thing should all fail. So that we can come back and do it again. This might not be something that's important to this, to this council, but it is important to me, it's important to Ben, and it's important to some of you. Uh, that's why I'm here to just kind of speak on that behalf and really ask you to think before voting in favor. This project can come back in the next council, and then if you want to change the game, you can change it from the very beginning and say, this is a whole citywide project. This is something that we should all have a vote on, which you all do. Uh, and that's why I'm here, just to support Ben. Ben, you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Menchaca. Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez. Thank you, Majority Leader and Speaker. And I would like to speak about one of my bills on transportation, the pay by plate parking meters, which, which would allow a person to enter the vehicle's license plate at a parking meter to raise her payment for parking. This method would allow for the tracking of payments by the vehicle's license plate rather than by paper receipt. This bill will provide for a more robust, easy, and effective way of paying for parking throughout New York City while ensuring that those who are enforcing such parking regulations do so correctly and efficiently. Many of the bills that we are passing today on transportation will improve the quality of life in the city as well as ensuring that not only my bill but the other bills address that trucking and freight industry is able to effectively move and unload, and move and unload items throughout the five boroughs safely. Hoy estamos votando un paquete de legislaciones que son importantes para nosotros, especialmente el que va a permitir que cuando una persona pague para un mirror lo pueda hacer en una aplicación, además también de crear nuevas regulaciones para que los vehículos eh, dejen la mercancía en los vecindarios. Thank you. Thank you. Report of special committees. None. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, Mr. Clerk, before uh, we uh, proceed uh, in the appropriate manner, I want to say that we are joined by, did she just leave? We're joined by two council member elects who are here. Uh, we were joined by uh, council member Ina Vernikoff uh, from Brooklyn and also council member elect Sean Abreu from Manhattan. They were here, they, I think they've left the room, but I wanted to welcome them and, and, uh, and tell them uh, we look forward to making sure their transition goes well. Go ahead. Thank you so much. We will now move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, pre-considered intro 2456 Labor Peace Agreements. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, intro 2448A, Earned Safe and Sick Time Act Amendment. Amended and coupled on general orders with a message of necessity. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, Intro 903A, Commissary Accounts. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, Intro 139A, Student Health Services Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 1803, Transparency Resolution. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1804, Business Improvement District. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 927 and Reso 1806 and LU 928 and Reso 1807, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Fire and Emergency Management, intro 1891A, Zamboni Machines. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on General Welfare, intros 148A, 150A, and 2405A, Rental Voucher Eligibility and Students in Temporary Housing. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, intro 167B, Agency First Violation Warnings. Amended and coupled on general orders. 
Intro 1784A, Office of Not-for-Profit Organization Services. I'm ending it coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1635A, Artwork on Temporary Protective Structures. I'm ending it coupled on general orders. Intro 2312A, Fees for Vacating a Premises. I'm ending it coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, Intro 1487A, Population Study Related to Land Use Actions. Amended and coupled on general orders. LU 881 and Reso 1808, disposition of city owned property. Coupled on general orders. LU 897 and Reso 1809 and LU 898 and Reso 1810, wind powers. Coupled on general orders. LU 911 through LU 921, various applications. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission to pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Intro 1392A, District Attorney Reporting. Amended and coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 2253A, Micro Distribution Centers. Amended and coupled in general orders. Intros 2277A and 2279A, Loading Zones. Amended and coupled in general orders. Intros 2422A, Parking Meters. Amended and coupled in general orders. General Orders Calendar. LU 884 and Reso 1790 through LU 888 and Reso 1794, Gowanus Canal Facility and Mercy Home Amendment. Coupled on general orders. General Orders Calendar. LU 848 and Reso 1811 through LU 851 and Reso 1814, Glenmore Manor. Coupled on general orders. General Orders Calendar. L LU 864 and Reso 1815 through LU 866 and 1817 New York Blood Center. Coupled on general orders. General Orders Calendar. LU 867 and Reso 818 and LU 868 and Reso 1819 343 Madison Avenue MTA Headquarters. Coupled in general orders. General Orders Calendar. LU 869 and Reso 1820 through LU 874 and Reso 1825 Gowanus Neighborhood Plan. Coupled in general orders. General Orders Calendar. LU 888. 882 and 1826 and LU 883 and 1827, 185, 17 Hillside Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders. General orders calendar, LU 889 and, and Rezo 1828 through LU 893 and Rezo 1832, Cooper Park Common. Coupled on general orders. General orders calendar, LU 894 and Rezo 1833 and LU 895 and Rezo 1834, 824 Metropolitan Avenue. Coupled on general orders. General orders calendar, pre-considered LU 912 and Rezo 1835 and pre-considered LU 913 and Rezo 1836, 1045 Atlantic Avenue. Coupled on general orders and before I ask the clerk to take a roll call vote on the items on today's general order calendar, I, I there was one thing that I was remiss in mentioning before, which, uh, you know, we're getting to the end of our time here uh, for many of us at the City Council. It's my understanding, and I don't know if he's on in a hybrid way, it's my understanding that today, today's meeting is minority leader, uh, former minority leader now, uh, Steve Matteo's final meeting of the New York City Council. And I want to say personally that Steve Matteo is one of the greatest people that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. He is a solid human being. He is hardworking. He cares about his community, he cares about his borough, he cares about the city, and uh, I wish there were more, I wish there was the ability to do more bipartisan work in the way that we have been able to do with Steve over these last four years. He is just a, a mensch, I consider him a friend, um, and uh, it has been an honor to serve alongside of him while being speaker and having him be minority leader. So before we take a roll call vote on today's uh, uh, general order calendar, I would love to to give a, a standing ovation and, a, and, a, and an applause to our friend and colleague, Minority Leader Steve Matteo. Thank you. He's at the dentist's office right now, I'm told. Okay, uh, I'm gonna ask the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general orders calendar. Thank you. Riley. Aye on all. Thank you. Matteo. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Speaker. I am at the dentist, but I wanted to uh, put in my votes. First, I just wanna thank you for those wonderfully kind words. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve my district serves the minority leader in the city council. We have done some really good things together and a bipartisan effort, even when we disagree on 98% of the issues before us, we come together and we, we work on the 2% that we can agree on and we've had done some great things. And um, I wanna thank you, your staff, 
the, the entire staff of the City Council. I've been in the City Hall since 2004, so there are a lot of people that I want to thank that I will touch base with this week. Um, to my colleagues, I, I want to thank you as well. Um, we, as I said to the speaker, we've gotten a lot, a lot done together. You've become very close friends to me, and I wish you all well. Um, I am leaving a month early to start my next chapter, um, but I do want to say thank you. Um, I will miss uh, being in City Hall and, and miss all of you. Um, so thank you for, for almost eight great years and, uh, honestly, 17 great years at City Hall. Uh, it's been the ride of a lifetime, and um, I look forward to my next chapter. I look forward to everyone else's next chapter and wish everyone uh, good luck. Uh, with that, I'm voting no on 2279, no on 1392, no on 2448, no on 2456, no on 1784, and yes on the rest. Thank you. Some things will never change. Adams. Councilmember Adams votes aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, just briefly, rarely am I given an opportunity to lend my voice on anything related to sickle cell. So um, because I'm able to lend my voice on the expansion of research and education and funding related to sickle cell, um, I would literally have to say just with my heart on behalf of my little cousin, Timmy, who died in 2018 at the age of 26 because of complications related to his sickle cell, on behalf of my close friend, Sean Brooks, who died in 2019, the summer of 2019, at the age of 43 because of complications due to his sickle cell, and all of the other individuals who never had an opportunity to talk about their struggles with sickle cell, my vote today is on behalf of them because of the lack of research and funding and education, again, related to sickle cell. Um, so with that, I vote aye on all, and I wish everyone a blessed and happy holiday, and all the best to majority to minority leader Nadia. Thank you. Ayala. Councilmember Ayala votes aye. Councilmember Barron. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I want to say I vote aye on all, with the exception of land use 897, Reso 1809, and land use 898 with Reso 810. And the reason I'm voting no is because we're once again building shelters, and I think we have an obligation to build housing, permanent housing. And I've said and I've shared with you before that there is a model for that in my district. Help Homes is located in my district, and they wanted to demolish the existing shelter and build a new shelter to be incorporated with three other units of permanent housing. And we fought and we negotiated with them and they decided that they would add 100 units for those who had been in shelters and would include them in the apartments, permanent apartments, not new shelters to replace an existing shelter. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Brannon. Aye at all. Thank you, Cabrera. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'll be very brief. I just wanna take a moment to congratulate Council Member Riley, if I heard him right. Uh, this is his very first bill, uh, so I want to congratulate you. I know how that felt 12 years ago, and many of us who were here 12 years ago, that, that great feeling of passing your first bill. So congratulations and many more. I'll be voting no on 1392 and yes on the rest. Thank you. Chin. Councilmember Chin votes aye on all. Carnegie. 
Can you explain? Granted. So uh, recovery and resiliency, we talk about that all the time, and that demands that we not get back to where we were, but get, get back to a place in the future that is inclusive of all New Yorkers. Um, the black community leads every health disparity known to man, including heart disease, including uh, sickle cell, as was mentioned before. It is incumbent upon us to make bold steps towards research and development that will change the outcomes of minority communities across this city. So for that reason, and this was a difficult you know, uh, decision for me, but when I think about the pandemic and the one thing that the pandemic did uh, demonstrate is how there are these disparities and they were exacerbated by the pandemic. We have a, we have a uh, there's a reasonable expectation that we as a body will move this city forward and be inclusive to all members in every corner of the city of New York. So I will be voting on it. Thank you. Thank you. Dharma Diaz. Councilmember Dharma Diaz votes aye. Councilmember Ruben Diaz, senior. I'm voting yes on all except intro number 1392 and LU 864, 865, and 866. So happy uh, Thanksgiving to all of you. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa. Thank you, sir. Dinowitz. Council member, please use a, we need you to approach the microphone, please. Thank you, sir. I vote yes on all except 2279A. Drum. Aye. Thank you. Eugene. I would I. I would I. Thank you. Feliz. Uh, I vote aye on all, not including 1392, which I vote no on. Um, I want to wish all of my wonderful colleagues a very happy and safe and warm Thanksgiving. And I also want to congratulate uh, my colleagues, including Council Member Riley, on your first piece of legislation. It's a legislation that's going to make big impacts on the lives of many New Yorkers, especially low-income, vulnerable tenants. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Gennaro. Councilmember Gennaro votes aye. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to speak very briefly on intro 2448 uh, that I introduced on behalf of our mayor to provide our uh, earned safe and sick time for any New Yorker, any parent that wants to make sure that their children um, are vaccinated. It allows them to take up to four hours to provide the opportunity to get their children vaccinated and or care for a child that is affected by COVID-19. As we continue to rebound from COVID, it is really important to make sure that children ages 5 to 11 are given the vaccine and that no New Yorker should have to choose between taking time off from work and getting their child vaccinated. So I thank my colleagues. I want to thank the mayor and the administration for their leadership. I'm proud to have introduced this bill. And in addition, I want to express my support for the New York Blood Center proposal before uh, this body today for all the reasons that Chair Salamanca cited and so many of my colleagues. I am really, really, really proud to support this project because I know that it strikes a balance. And when you talk about creating good paying jobs and building sustainability in our city, and investing in education and research and science. This is absolutely the direction that we need to go in. There are so many New Yorkers, my own constituents of color that I represent, that live every day in pain with debilitating diseases. And if we can provide the research and the services that are necessary to allow them to live healthy, then we should do that. And so I wanna thank everyone for their work. I know this was not an easy decision, 
but I'm also looking at the bigger picture, the larger picture, and that is the health and wellness of every New Yorker across the five boroughs and not in one particular neighborhood. So with that, I wish colleagues and staff and everyone a blessed, happy Thanksgiving season to you and your families. May God bless you and keep you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Nye. No on 2279 and 1392. I on the rest, wishing everyone all the blessings of Thanksgiving. Thank you. Rodriguez. Councilmember Rodriguez votes aye. Gordenchik. I vote aye on all with the exception of 1392. I do want to wish all my colleagues and all New Yorkers a very, very happy Thanksgiving and a very, very sweet and happy Hanukkah for those who are celebrating. Thank you. Thank you. Holden. Vote no on, on LE 864, 865, 866 with the accompanying those. And no, no on intros 131992 and intro 2023 A and I on the rest. Thank you. Council Member Holden, after 1392, I'm sorry, could you say that last item? 2312 A. That's, that's a no. no. Thank you. Kalos. No on land use items 864, 865, and 866, and resol accompanying resolutions 1815, 1816, and 1817, and I on the rest. Thank you. Ku. Cool. Councilmember Koo voted yes. Kozlowitz. Councilmember Kozlowitz votes aye on all. Lander. Request permission to explain. Permission granted. Thanks, Madam Majority Leader. I'm voting aye on all, including on the Blood Center, but I do believe this is an important moment to stop and look at what is broken in our reactive land use process in the era of the climate crisis, of an affordability crisis, of aging infrastructure. We need a more strategic, a more proactive process that grounds future planning in the shared values of New Yorkers. It doesn't work to have the vast majority of proposals proposed by a developer or come from City Hall, have a community get in a defensive crouch and fight against them, and then have it land here amidst what's so often a shrill debate uh, Speaker Johnson has a bill that would move us toward a system of comprehensive planning with communities developed in dialogue by this body that would involve New Yorkers at the front. You could do it every 10 years, every four years, in saying, what are our goals for our land use process? What kind of affordable ability do we need? How do we think about what neighborhoods it should go in? What kind of infrastructure investments do we need? How do we re relate our planning process to our capital budget and our infrastructure process? And then, grounded in shared values, when rezonings reached this chamber, we would be able to debate them with something other than is member deference the thing or does this project have broader values, but we lack that in our process. So I just think it's important, I don't know that there's time between now and the end of the year to get there, but the next council could pick that bill up and move us toward uh, a model of comprehensive planning with communities grounded in shared values. I just submit, let's use this moment, seeing how broken this reactive land use process is, to move us forward into something that in the era of the climate crisis, with such a gaping lack of affordability, with aging infrastructure, is sufficient to the task of a land use vision of an infrastructure plan that's up to the future New York we deserve. Let's uh, take that shot. Thank you, colleagues. Congrats to members passing their first bills and members passing some uh, career capping bills. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levin. Permission to explain vote? 
Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, for, I just want to acknowledge uh, some people's work on the CDFEPS uh, legislation. Um, uh, Jamie uh, Plowich at um, uh, Coalition for Homeless Youth, uh, Beth Hoffmeister and Teresa Moser at Legal Aid, Annie Minguez mm -hmm. at Good Shepherd, Elizabeth Garcia at Good Shepherd, um, and Jane Biggleson at Covenant House, um, along with um, uh, Aminta Kilowan, um, uh, uh, and um, Elizabeth Adams from my office and, um, and Nicole Hunt from my office as well. Um, they all put a tremendous amount of work into, into that legislation. Um, I invited um, uh, uh, Lou's family today, but um, they weren't able to attend. Um, uh, his wife, Robin, informed me that his, uh, Robin, Lou and Robin's grandson, uh, Lucas Aaron Fiddler, was, was just born. Um, over the last couple of days, and so we want to uh, uh, welcome, uh, welcome Lucas into the world. Um, and uh, on the uh, Gowanus rezoning, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge the, the amazing amount of work by the uh, 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 Gowanus community, in particular public housing residents and the GNCJ members. Um, uh, the, the commitment by the administration to supporting public housing in this Rezoning is extraordinary, $200 million to refurbish every single apartment in, uh, in these two developments. Every single apartment at Gowanus and, and Wyckoff Gardens is going to be refurbished by NYCHA, not through, um, uh, not through RAD and not through privatization of any kind or any type of private development or infill, um, but just as a, an investment from NYCHA, which is, um, uh, extraordinary and unprecedented and for, for aging infrastructure like these these two developments 70 and 60 years old um, this will will give them uh, a, a longer life uh, so I just want to acknowledge all of their great work um, and again thanks uh, Councilmember Lander for uh, leading the way all, all on this thank you, How did you vote? I vote aye on all thank you <laughs> Levine Thank you, with congrats to all the sponsors of so much important legislation, I will be voting aye on all. Thank you. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. The nonprofit sector is the lifeblood of underserved communities, offering a vast scope of services to address many needs of New Yorkers. One of the challenges that many nonprofit organizations face is balancing daily operations while keeping pace with the needs of New Yorkers during their time of need. As a city, I think we can all recognize that running a nonprofit is no easy feat and difficult to navigate checks and balances to ensure transparency and accountability. My bill, intro 1784A, is intended to provide nonprofit organizations with the liaison that can help streamline the budgeting process from allocation to disbursement while bridging the communication and information gap between city agencies and organizations working on the ground. I want to thank Speaker Johnson, Government Operations Chair Cabrera, my colleagues, as well as Jason Goldman, Jeff Baker, Rebecca Chasen, CJ Murray, and David Seltzer for working on this bill. Lastly, I want to recognize my staff, including former Legislative Director Jenna Calderoni, for her advocacy on this bill. I also want to congratulate uh, Councilmember Riley on the passage of your first bill and all my colleagues passing bills today. Thank you so much. Sorry, I vote aye on all. Thank, Thank you. you. Maisel. Councilmember, please go. Could you come use the microphone? Thanks. No on 1392, yes, and everything else. Thank you, sir. Menchaca. Thank you. I will be voting no on all the blood center LUs and accompanying resolutions, and no on the Gowanus rezoning and all the LUs and accompanying resolutions. Have Thank you me. all understood that? Okay, I'm gonna be voting aye on all, except for the blood center, all the land use items and accompanying resolutions. Uh, and then I'm going to be voting no on the Gowanus uh, neighborhood rezoning and company resolutions. 
Awesome. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain my vote, Madam Majority Leader. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. <clears throat> uh, while it was not my intention uh, to speak this afternoon, nor was it to justify my vote or explain my actions on this particular issue, the actions of my colleague have precipitated such a response. Councilmember Kalos and his despicable, irresponsible, accusatory actions have done more to undermine the integrity of this body and this institution than anything I've seen in my eight-year experience here. I am saddened to see that because, of, once again, he is blinded by the enclaves of privilege that he has failed to see that this project benefits the greater good. He has failed to see the value of the project. He has failed to see the, his task as a legislator to serve those who are marginalized and the least of these. This project will serve to benefit groups that have been historically received less attention, less funding, like sickle cell, while simultaneously supporting the next generation in housing, life science, development, and research center. For these reasons, I am voting yes, with the exceptions of 2253 and 2279. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. Councilmember Moya votes aye on all. Perkins. Powers. Councilmember Powers votes aye on all. Reynoso. Good afternoon. Um, I just want to say that we are voting on two projects in my district for affordable housing. One is a uh, 700, uh, uh, 500 units of affordable housing with 200 bed shelter. Uh, it's a project that we've been working on for uh, over 40 years in my district after the Greenpoint Hospital got shut down. And now we're gonna have 700 spaces for people in our community to finally be able to continue to move into Witnessburg. No market rate housing, a not-for-profit developer. Um, it's everything that we could ask for and we're really excited about it in our district. We also have another one on Metropolitan Avenue, which is a, uh, um, a rezoning in which we're going to see a MIH rezoning. So it won't be all affordable housing, but it's a much smarter building. But uh, in total, we're talking about 800 units of housing of which 700, over 750 are affordable. We're also passing legislation related to a transportation issue that I think is really important. The wave of the future is that we're going to get all of our stuff through deliveries and packages. It is just the reality. We're going to see more trucks. Hopefully we can move away from those and move to micro mobility and have bikes delivering most of our goods. But we need to make space for these trucks so they're not double parking, putting the lives of pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicle drivers in danger. Um, and in doing so, what we're doing is cutting out spaces in this city for delivery trucks and freight. I think it's a good move. Um, I wish we could go further, I always do. But I think this is a very good compromise, and we did a really good job at setting the foundation for how we're going to be moving goods in the future. Again, thank you all. Happy Thanksgiving and happy holidays to you all. Um, with much love in my heart, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rivera. Aye. Council Member Rivera votes aye. Rose. Permission to explain my vote, please? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I want to say congratulations to uh, Council Member Riley. Um, uh, that, first, that first piece of legislation is really special. I really want to thank um, Council Member Steve Levin for his dedication and tenacity um, for pushing this legislation for our most vulnerable youth, our runaway and homeless youth and, and youth in foster care. This is a population that is often forgotten. And I wanna thank you so much, Steve, for, um, for you know, just sticking to it and, and fighting for them. 
And uh, I'm really pleased that you gave honor to Lou Fiddler, who really his first love was uh, runaway and homeless youth and vulnerable youth. And to my colleague, uh, minority leader, Steve Matteo, I want to say I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you walking in Staten Island. And with that, I'm voting um, I on all. And I want to say to Council Member Kalos, I'm doing so because I really do believe that the, there should be a greater good for the greater number of people. Thank you. Thank you. Rosenthal. I vote aye on all and permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Council Member Riley, uh, congratulations on your first bill. First bills are always special. Um, Councilmember Lewis, thank you so much for your legislation in support of nonprofits um, and helping them uh, deal with the bureaucracy that is city government. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm just so pleased that the council is as a body voting yes on the blood center. I'm so impressed with my colleagues who were able to see the bigger picture and lead um, so that we'll be addressing um, issues that affect the whole city, perhaps not the Upper East Side, but the whole city. Um, uh, Especially, I, I would just like to say that um, thank you to Council Member Powers, Borough President Brewer, um, for navigating this for uh, the rest of us and stepping up, coming to the table, going to the meetings and navigating this um, for the council. I think that um, uh, what the whole city will benefit from is tremendous. You know, the one concern that's been raised that gives me pause is about the letter of uh, agreement from the blood center uh, enumerating the things that they will do for the larger community. And um, I, I really want to make just put on the record to hold their feet to the fire to prove uh, the naysayers wrong. And that uh, the blood center, you know, I challenge you to really come through on all of these promises, including the sentence that says you'll work with the council members to try to do even more for those with sickle cell. Um, please follow through on everything that you've agreed to. Um, it is for this larger good that the body as a whole is voting yes today for the blood center. And we're really pleased to have that opportunity to do so. Thank you so much. Thanks for the time. Oh, uh, and congratulations to council members Salamanca, Moya um, for leading on this effort. Uh, I really appreciate council member Salamanca what you said on the floor today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Salamanca. Councilmember Salamanca votes aye on all. Traeger. Uh, I vote aye, and I just want to also extend uh, my appreciation and thanks to Minority Leader Mario uh, and thank him uh, for his service. Uh, he mentioned earlier that he may not have agreed always with, with the majority in the council, but I could tell you as a member of the budget negotiation team, we had a strong supporter for public education, for public schools. I want to thank him for that support and wish him continued success and congratulate all my colleagues on the passage of their bills today. And again, with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of 1392. I vote no on 1392 and aye on all others. And I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Council Member. Van Bramer. Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, like Council Member Adams, I just wanted to uh, talk about uh, former Council Member Ed Sadowski. 
who uh, passed away. He lived for the last few decades of his life in Long Island City and was an amazing, amazing person, an amazing council member uh, for 24 years, chair of the Finance Committee. But even in retirement, he was extremely active on the board of our beloved Queens Public Library with Councilmember Adams and was a driving force behind the new Hunters Point Library that was built. That wouldn't have happened without Ed Sadowski's passionate uh, leadership. And, and I loved that man. He was such a good person. And I just wanted to call Ed Sadowski. I have a photo from this chamber and this body in 1970. And Ed sat somewhere around there. And it's a great photo um, that I inherited. So thank you, uh, Council Member Ed Sadowski. I also just want to say, uh, Brad Lander, an amazing job on Gowanus. Uh, few people have worked harder and more successfully and done as well with this very, very difficult process that you outlined before. Uh, so uh, thank you. And Steve Levin, um, uh, we've served for 12 years together, uh, a dear friend. Congratulations on all of that. Uh, with all of that said, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Council Member Yeager. May I be excused to explain my vote, Madam President? Permission yeah, granted. I just don't want to stand in front of him so everybody can see who I'm. Thank you very much. Um, you know, today, today, I guess, is the culmination of four years, my four years in the council on contentious or non-contentious or whatever you have at land use matters. And um, for some reason, no matter how contentious they've been, we've always come to the place where the member whose district they're in is really the deciding factor. Should it be that way? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, in my view, the people send somebody to this body, and if they don't like how we do things, they can throw us out. Term limits change that dynamic a little bit, but at the end of the day, elections do mean something. For me, I think so, at least. And so, in their wisdom, maybe not, the people of the east side of Manhattan sent Ben Kalos here to the council. Maybe he's done a good job, maybe he hasn't, maybe he's smart, maybe he isn't, maybe he's a good councilman, maybe he's awful. But he decided uh, in his wisdom, or lack thereof, as whatever you may think of it, that the future of his neighborhood, it doesn't make sense to have this project in its current iteration. Doesn't mean no project at all. Like he said, Blood Center doesn't actually do their blood stuff there, they do it in other places. So for the same reason that I'm going to vote with Councilman Lander on the Gowanus, which I don't think is actually a very good project, but I respect your work and I respect Councilman Levin's work even when I disagree with both of you, which is as frequent as uh, I can imagine. Today, I'm here to agree with Councilman Machaca, which is also as infrequent as you can imagine. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to vote no on intro 1392. Um, because we do not have the right to regulate district attorneys. If you don't believe me, you can just check how we just voted. We don't have ranked choice voting for district attorneys. We don't have campaign finance uh, board regulations and rules and matching funds for district attorneys. Um, the district attorneys don't report to us. They are not part of the city charter. They're not creations of the city. They are state officials. And even if we did, this would nonetheless be preempted. Don't have to believe me. Five district attorneys in this city say that. Now, the argument, the counter argument, Madam President, may I just for a few more seconds, thank you. The counter argument to that is, but the, city's, the city council's lawyers say this is a good bill and we're allowed to do that. The balancing act for me is five district attorneys versus the lawyers who work here at the city council. Every single time I'm gonna go with what the five DAs say. So I'm no on that. I'm no on intro 2279, intro 2253, intro 2277. Clerks tell me if I'm good. Okay, and with respect to those who feel differently, um, there will still be a blood center in New York and it will still do good work, but I am a no on land use 864, 865, 866, resolutions 1815, 1816, 1817, and very quickly, I apologize, but I wanted to do this at the beginning. Um, uh, the speaker, Mr. Speaker mentioned uh, my new colleague, our new colleague, uh, Councilwoman-elect Ina Vernikov, uh, I share the longest border of any of part of my district with the council member from the 48th district, and she is here today, and I would like to offer her my congratulations and my welcome as well. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you. Madam President, uh, I, 
have to clarify, I believe the clerk asked me to uh, mention uh, my nose, 2279, 2253, and 2277. Thank you. Borelli. Congratulations on being Minority Leader. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate it. And uh, permission to explain my vote briefly? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, it is an honor to, to be the City Council's Minority Leader. Uh, I would go into some of the no votes that we have today, but Calvin Yeager did such a tremendous job of articulating them that I'll only point out the one he missed, intro 2279A. Uh, it's a seemingly innocuous bill about DOT and loading zones. We all know we need loading zones. But when we set a criteria and then set a mandate, we sometimes have to fill the number that we set ourselves in law. Uh, and our view is that if we have a criteria and it's good, you should put a lo loading zone there. If we have a criteria and it's not good, you shouldn't put it there. Why mandate uh, something that we haven't even set the criteria for now uh, in advance? Um, the other bill, I just want to thank everyone for passing my bill on Zambonis. It's a historic and transformative day for Zambonis in this great city. It's only the first step. Our ice-refreshing friends will have years of, of work to do in our city, and we support them. Obviously, it's a silly uh, uh, comment. I just made a joke. Um, but it's not a silly bill. We've been running Zambonis against the manufacturer's instructions for many years because of a law. So thank you all for your support. And I vote aye on all, except 2279A, 1392A, 2448A, 2252A, 1784A, 2312A. Thank you. Kalos. Permission to change my vote on introduction 1392A. Majority Leader? The vote is still open. The vote is still open. Uh, and if I just may explain very briefly, I'll only take a minute. Uh, I, 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 after such nice things that uh, Councilmember Yeager said about me or not, um, <laughs> <laughs> he and I have rarely agreed on things. Uh, but uh, I'd like to say that things people say on the floor can actually change somebody's mind. And uh, when you mentioned trying to do campaign finance on the district attorneys, you better believe I've tried to do that for eight years and been told we couldn't. You better believe I wanted to do ranked choice voting on the DAs. And for every good government reason you mentioned for why we can't do it is why I am changing my vote on 1392A. Thank you. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Councilman Borelli, can we verify something with you real quick? Yes. It's a, uh, intro 2252. Yes, uh, I'm voting no on intro 2252. Voting aye and all, except 2279A, 1392A, 2448A, 1784A, 2312A. Thank you, Council Member. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye and all.
Thank you all for your patience. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 2279A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, seven negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1392A, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, 11 negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 1784A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 2448-A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 2456, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. LUs 897 and 898 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. LUs 864, 865, 866 and accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 2312A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. LUs 869 through 874 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 47. Do not stop talking, it's not a In the affirmative and one negative and zero abstentions. And intro 2253A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions and intro 2277-A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one negative and zero abstentions. At this time, this meeting's going to stand at a pause um, until we, we're gonna make a minor change and then we're gonna come right back. So the meeting will stand at a pause until that such time. We are going to make, if you all could please return back to your seats. Quiet in the chamber. We're gonna make a minor adjustment to intro 1392A, which was adopted by a vote of 36 in the affirmative and 12 <coughs> negative. There was also one other change. We're changing LUs 864, 865, 866 and accompanying resos which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative and five negative. And that is the total count and it is corrected and we are gonna continue on with the rest of the meeting. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been, shh. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so now we will move into general discussion.
We're going to start with Council Member Barron, followed by Council Member Miller, Levin, and Powers. Thank you, Raphael. Are you good? A little lower, thank you. Thank you, that's great. Uh, good afternoon to all my colleagues. First, I want to express condolences regarding the death of Malika Shabazz, daughter of El Haj Malik El Shabazz and Betty Shabazz. And uh, just want to express the condolences to the family and let them know that the assembly member and I continue to send them our support. Secondly, I want to call your attention to the fact that this past Saturday, we had a street co-naming for Akai Gurley, who was killed seven years ago by the NYP, NYPD. He was not obstructing any pro movement or progress or any programs. He was not armed. He did not confront anyone, yet he was killed in the stairway of the NYCHA development at Pink Houses, just as he was walking down the stairs. He was shot and killed. He was arrested. He was tried. He was convicted. He was found guilty. And he received, no, the perpetrator of the crime received no jail time at the request of the Brooklyn District Attorney and the trial judge. And we feel that that was a grave miscarriage of justice but the family was there and glad to have the street co-named in his honor. <coughs> and thirdly, yesterday we had a ribbon cutting. You may know the NIHOP program, which said we would take small areas and build homes. And we celebrated the construction of three brand new two-family homes aimed at those who qualified to purchase it if they were earning 56 thousand dollars, six two-family homes with the eligibility requirement of $75,000, and four three-family homes with the eligibility requirement at $95,000. And you might ask me, well, what was the sale price of the homes? The sale price of the homes ranged from $300,000 to $570,000. And finally, and standing in this particular microphone because I'm celebrating the fact that we no longer have the statue of Thomas Jefferson here in our chambers. It was 20 years ago that the then council member Charles Barron challenged the fact that this body where we deliberate and where we talk about fairness and equity should have a statue of Thomas Jefferson who was a slave-holding pedophile, as my husband described him, who felt that blacks were inferior and who did not seek any justice for black people. So we're celebrating that here, 20 years later, this body, uh, also with the support of the black, of the BLAC, and many members of you who are here, and with the support of the speaker and Jason and the efforts that they raised, we no longer have that ominous statue here, and we're glad he's gone. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. We will now have Council Member Miller, followed by Levin, and then finally Powers. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to mention that today I humbly and honored, am honored to introduce legislation that would rename St. Albans Park in honor of the late Archie Spigner former council member for the 27th district, district leader, and New York City transit bus driver, like myself. Uh, there's so many things I'd like to say about what, whom we call the dean of Southeast Queens, Archie Spigner, but I will say that I will leave those remarks and just say, as council member Barron just said, that the removal of the statue would be in his honor, as well as in the honor of the students of PS 134Q, which in these very changes three years ago asked why he was there. After an unnecessarily long and hard fought battle, we have finally secured the removal of Thomas Jefferson's statue from the City Hall chambers. 
It is reassuring that our collective voices were heard on this matter after having been a topic of, uh, topic of discussion for nearly two decades. It speaks volumes to the body and its leadership that we are finally able to secure its removal and location to a more appropriate venue with a complex legacy of Thomas Jefferson, including his notable inhumane treatment of African slaves and Native Americans. We have held for a long time that such figure does not belong in the people's house despite the provocateurs trying to justify his presence in this legislative body of what is now the most diverse city in the world. Today, we can unequivocally say that the, this institution values the opinions of its members, its constituency, and that those that they represent. And in the years to come, 2022, when the council is welcomed in, it will be the most diverse body in the history of this body. And we cannot do so with, with good conscience, with Jefferson domineering presence overlooking the work that we do here. So with that, I want to thank all and welcome all that have remained here from the BLAC, Progressive Caucus, and all members of good conscience to uh, we're inviting everyone to take a picture when we're done where Jefferson once stood. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker, for your leadership. Thank you so much, Councilmember Miller, for your leadership. Councilmember Levin, followed by Councilmember Powers. Thank you, Madam Majority. I'll keep this brief. I just wanted to um, thank and acknowledge my, my friend Steve Maddie, our minority le former minority leader, um, for his years of service to this council. I've had for the last almost four years the opportunity to serve on the Standards and Ethics Committee, um, along with Councilmember Chin, Councilmember Gibson, Councilmember Kozlowitz. And Steve um, has been our chair during that time um, on some very difficult issues. Um, and, and difficult matters, and he uh, is is a, a great example of integrity in this body, and um, and somebody that um, I know uh, I can count on, and that the people of New York can count on. And so I just want to thank him, take this opportunity to thank him on the record for um, his years of service and for his integrity uh, in in that service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here to also say very nice words about Steve Matteo, who is not here today with us, but I know he's watching at home, and I'm texting with him, and I just will say that I think what the speaker said about uh, Steve Matteo is very true. He's a man that you find uh, very few in politics at times, somebody who keeps his word, somebody who's a man of integrity, and somebody who wants to work together even when you disagree, and I wish we had so many more people like that in politics on both sides of uh, both parties. And while he won't be here for his last day, Steve and I are avid Yankee fans, and text each other all the time, and I know we'll still be able to see each other, but I want to thank him, and of course, congratulate Joe Borelli, who's our new minority leader as well, and again, in that spirit of what Steve brings to the City Council every day, I hope we, in the next Council, until the end of this session, can continue to foster uh, agreement and or at least collegiality when we disagree. So, thanks so much. Thank you so much, and I also want to share my condolences to the entire um, Malcolm X family, and with that, I'll now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. The stated meeting of November 23rd, 2021 is hereby adjourned. We have two stated meetings left of this body. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. But who's counting? Thank you. Me. <laughs>